Kelly Talbot's story is proof that executing the fundamentals of networking paired with hard work will get you a job. You don't have to have a fancy stunt or a viral TikTok or YouTube video here. Marley is an account executive at Schaefer, Con and Carter here in Chicago. They are a small but mighty agency known for being one of Chicago Tribune's best places to work. And of course, Ad Age's Small Agency of the Year in 2018 and shortlisted since. If you're from Chicago, Cubs fan or not, you are familiar with their Fly the W campaign. Also, check out SCC's ad, Sense of Wrigley Field. It's phenomenal work, and in true Chicago fashion, they also have Portillo's as a client, along with many others. But Marley and me don't talk dogs. Bad joke. But we do talk about how she switched into advertising from art history, taking an internship for her first job out of college, and how that led to the role she's in today. One cool thing about working in a smaller, agile shop is that you might end up on a billboard a mile from your own house, like Marley. So head to our Instagram, at EnteringAd, to connect with Marley and to see her recommended resources. If you enjoy breaking and entering, please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. It's the easiest way to help us grow. And now with the show. This is the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. And as usual, I am your accomplice, Gino Schellenberg. Kick it, Mikey. Marley Talbot, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Podcast. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thanks, Gino. How are you? Doing well. Like we started, I start, I started off a little sporadic and a uh, little messy here, but we've cleaned it up. Uh, you know, hopefully the internet works out well, but I'm excited to have you on. This is going to be a super fun episode, Chicago episode, yeah. Michigan State episode. Yes. We've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> Um, cool. So you work, Marley, at the wonderful Schaefer, Con and Carter over here in Chicago. You're an account executive. Is that all correct? Did I fact check everything? Okay. Yeah, the facts are correct. Good, good. And how long have you been at SECs, which is, a, which is known for some great work here? It's a smaller yeah. agency, but super powerful. Smaller, um, but very effective. Uh, a lot of really strong local work. And we're also starting to do more and more national work. I've been at SEC for just about a year and a half now. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Schaefer, Con and Carter, you might have heard of it if you're listening because Ad Age like features them as a small agency winner for their awards like every year. It's pretty consistent. They have also done some really great work for the Cubs. As you know, I'm a big fan of their work with the Cubs. Um, but some other cool clients too, like Casey's General Store. Um, what else we got at, at, at SCC? The, some of those big name clients that we can talk about. Oh my goodness. Um, we work a lot on Kellogg's. Um, their business to business work. Um, mm -hmm. So we work with their teams to um, market some of their uh, wholesale goods to restaurants and to schools. Um, we also have done a lot of work recently for Chamberlain, which might not be something most people have heard of, but they probably manufactured your garage door opener or your okay. smart garage system. Need and that. They recently had a campaign with a lot of buzz that um, focused on Alan Ruck and Ferris Bueller. Um, so kind of like a, a throwback. Yeah. There. yeah, not not sure if everyone's heard of it, but it did get a lot of good buzz in the press and it was a really fun piece of work to work on. Yeah. What can they look up like on YouTube to see that? I, let's see. Lift Master. What is what is it? I'm looking um, here online. I Chamberlain think, Group. Yeah, it should be Liftmaster was the brand that it was for, which is a subsidiary mm -hmm. of Chamberlain. And I think it was called the Oh Yeah campaign officially. Oh, I yeah. Think. Okay. Yep. Everybody go look that up. It's, I saw that before and it's really cool. Uh, yeah. Throwback, nostalgia, bring it new wave, really good work. So yeah. it was a really fun way to talk about garage door openers, which might not always be the sexiest product, but 
Well, that's how you know you're at a good agency when you can make it relevant and bring some buzz around it. So amazing stuff. We have a mutual friend. We, uh, I work with Julia. Shout out to Julia for putting this together. I, I, I'd be <laughs> remiss. I'd be foolish if I not gave her a shout out. So thank you, Julia Loring, for this. You met Julia uh, through Michigan State, we talked about. So what can we do in this episode? I'm thinking here we break it down from college. What made you want to go into advertising? How you got into SEC? Maybe some internships along the way. And just get us that story first, why you were interested in advertising. So the funny thing is I wasn't interested in advertising. Um, when I started school at Michigan State, I was studying to become a curator of art for museums and private collections. Okay. It's um, not advertising. Yes. So I was studying art history with um, some like arts and cultural management thrown in there, uh, not advertising, <laughs> mm -hmm. but still a little bit in the creative vein of things. And then one day I was in class and just got this feeling like I am not supposed to be here. Um, I loved my art history classes, but I just for some reason one day I was like, nope, this is not for me. And so I went to the registrar and changed my major and I picked advertising because it seemed more niche than something as general as communications, mm -hmm. uh, but still had a lot of transferable skills. And so I kind of told myself like, oh, you know, if I don't like it, it's still something that I could do a lot with. But then in the first class on the first day for that major, I was like, yeah, this is it. Everything clicked, everything fell into place and it just made sense. And that's kind of how that happened. So you're an art director now, you're super creative and you know art history. Is that how like if, if it turned out to be like is the art direction was what drew you to advertising? I mean, uh, the art was a little bit what drew me to advertising. I think mostly the communication side of it and working with people. Because um, you're curating, I guess that's what like art history, right? Is that the communication yeah. of the art and like looking back and understanding the meaning of it, and displaying that to people that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. That, yeah. But the funny thing is I didn't end up in the creative side of advertising. Right. I'm at a creative agency and I think all roles within the advertising profession are creative to a point just by the yes. nature of the industry. But um, I'm on the account side. Right. That's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so what, what so you, my thing would be like, okay, you're, you're, and what I was trying to hint at was your art history major. Okay. Maybe you go into copywriting. Maybe you're going to go into art direction. What drew you to the account side of things within the track? I honestly think it was the level of transferable skill at first. And then I learned more about it and it just felt that it fit who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, any accounts person you talk to is going to tell you they're type A. Sure. <laughs> and so I am a very type A organized personality. And um, I liked that it, it gave me the opportunity to be creative while still playing to some things that I felt were more of my strong suit. Gotcha. Gotcha. When did you switch the major over? This is interesting. In uh, my point. sophomore year. Sophomore year. Yeah, that's what I did too. I think sophomore oh. year. Actually, that might be a lie. I think it was spring semester my freshman year. But you started like your sophomore year going into advertising classes? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get it. You got to switch pretty early. Like you can't be switching second semester, junior year, first semester, senior year, unless I mean, you, you want to go an extra year. It. <laughs> yeah. People, people have done it. Um, and I know people that have finished four years even switching. So it's not, it's never too late, I guess. And maybe it is. I don't know. It's been a while since I've been in college, but, uh, what did you do in Michigan state? Once you were like, okay, advertising's for me. How do I learn as much as possible? Because you know, the classroom's great, but we are hungry. We want more. What did you do to, 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 to stay knowledgeable? Yes. Um, join everything. <laughs> I, uh, signed up for all of the clubs. I think I tried probably three or four and ended up picking one that I really liked, which ended up being MSU Advertising Association, which is how I met Julia. Nice. Um, and that uh, organization was all about getting the voice of experience from people in the industry. So it was bringing in guests every week, just 
to talk about their experience and answer questions. And that gave me a really good perspective on the industry. And then from there, I had guidance on what internships I wanted to look for and which areas of the industry I thought would be more or less interesting to me. Um, so from joining a club, I moved into getting more and more internships nice. and I also did a study abroad for advertising. So I got to for? see some of the international experience. What, is, um, what do you mean you did study abroad for advertising? It was an advertising specific study abroad. Um, nice. we visited, I think 17 agencies across. Where? three different cities, London, Paris, and Amsterdam. London um, is like home to strategy. That's like where strategy, we like the, what we know today of planning was like discovered. And yeah, it, we did visit some cool creative agencies in London as top well. Three in London. What were your favorites? Top three. Can I, say top one? Can I just say my top one? I yeah. love Atomic. We visited Atomic in London and that What's was that. Why have I never heard of that? It's a smaller creative shop, um, but really, really enjoyed Atomic. Is it only in London or is it accessible? I think so. I think it's only based in London. Hmm. Atomic in London. I, was, I know BBH is huge in London. Did you check them out? We did not visit BBH. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So let's, let me, let's loop it back here. Are you doing some research on some of the places you've seen? I, I see was you. Trying just, to look for we're checking some emails. No, I was trying. We visited an agency in uh, Amsterdam that was also a really cool creative shop that works on Heineken. Um, but I can't remember the well, name. Why am I thinking Havas? I feel like Havas would have something over there. We did visit Havas. I think we visited. We visited Havas London, and that was actually really fun we, because yeah. we were there during the World Cup, and so we got to oh, watch nice. the World Cup game at Havas London. Um, Very nice. It was a fun time. Let's loop it back because I think what you said was pretty important for current students today. Uh, you mentioned when you you switched over to advertising, which was a good move. Mm -hmm. um, no regrets. When we yeah. when you switched over to advertising, you tried out a bunch of different uh, clubs extracurriculars you know you tried a bunch of different things which is recommended and then you said you kind of went all in on one like this method and that was the msu ad club um msu advertising association okay so yeah i i was involved in other things for my public relations minor sure uh, we're still sort of in the vein of the same industry but i felt that in order to get the best experience, it was important to like really dedicate my time to a few high quality experiences rather than having a toe in each pool possible. Yeah. Um, I was thinking the same metaphor there. Yep. Yeah, and that actually allowed me to join the e-board um, for yep. the club, which uh, gave me great opportunity to meet all of our guest speakers and help coordinate with them and plan agency visits, which um, gave me contacts at some really great agencies. Um, so yeah. I think that really focusing in on one or two high quality extracurriculars is more important than being involved in everything possible. Yes, yes, I, I totally agree. And I, I did the same thing. So then you started networking, like you started working at organizing some visits. Uh, did you happen to get an internship at all, like your junior year summer or your sophomore year summer, if you're lucky? Yeah, so my internships were actually all during the school year by pure happenstance and my general life schedule. Okay. Um, I, I don't know that I would recommend it, but I also don't think I regret it. Like it, they were really great experiences. And I think that there are internships that people don't always go for because everyone's looking for that summer internship, but um, definitely a lot with schoolwork. So just make sure you're evaluating mm -hmm. everything you have going on before you Well, then you get, you get off. free summers, like your summers were off. Wow. Yeah, my summers were majority off. Okay. What tell us about the like the later one, the your last internship. Uh not the one with SEC, but the one that was before that. Sorry. Yeah. So my last internship before I graduated was 
not technically an internship. It was a, a paid position, a job with um, the College of Communication Arts and Sciences at Michigan State, yep. which is the college that houses the advertising uh, mm-hmm. department. So that was another position that was really about networking for me. I got to meet a lot of great people and have a lot of great experiences. And um, I was interviewing uh, different, and it was almost more of a PR internship. I'm not sure, sure. if this is the way for us to go, but I inter or I interviewed people for articles for the website. I would write those articles, and then okay. I was responsible for creating promotional materials for those articles. So it was mostly social media. Um, they had you doing everything. Yeah, I, I was kind of a little yeah. bit of everything, which I think led really well into me coming to work at Schaefer, Con and Carter because mm-hmm. it's a small creative agency. You really do get your hands dirty with all sorts of work, not just the things that fall within your day-to-day job description. Mm-hmm. So I think that that prepared me really well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's get to the fun part. I think you, so you graduated in what, what year did you graduate? Your, your recent graduate. Yes. What, 2019? Yeah. 2019. So right before the pandemic, it's a good year to graduate. Yeah. Um, 2020, not the best year to graduate, <laughs> but yeah. we're not, uh, this is not therapy session. We're just going to, we're talking about 2019. Great year. Uh, so 2019, you graduate, um, what what happens are you where are you applying to is it is it are you stressed out what's the situation where do you land i was extremely stressed out so i started applying to places very actively probably once april hit of yep. my senior year uh, up until then i was kind of like browsing internships and i applied for a couple internship programs but i really started actively applying in april yep and in April, um, my advertising association that I was a part of had done an agency tour in Chicago. And one of the agencies we visited was SCC. And I had absolutely fallen in love with it when we visited. And I expressed interest to the HR team that led our agency visit. And we actually were lucky enough to have one of the agency partners help lead our agency visit um, because she was in the office that day, nice. Gail Carter. Um, so I expressed my interest to her and to the HR team that was there. And what was that- her name? Gail Carter. Gail uh, Carter. One of the, yeah. One of the last names on the you know, yeah. Schaefer Conning Carter. And you said, Hey, Hey Gail, I want to work here. How'd you, how'd you express your interest? <laughs> um, it was a little less blunt than that. I wasn't quite so bold, but I was very clear, you know, in asking, are there summer internships? How can I apply? How can I get involved? I really, really like it here. And I want to be part of this company culture and this work ethic and all of the amazing ads that you guys was are it, Well, That's a very, that's much better than, hey, I want to work here. That's probably <laughs> what I would have said and probably not worked out. Um, but what, were you nervous when you said, you said that to her directly or did you LinkedIn messenger after? What was um, that? I essentially said it in like the, the group meeting during the Q&A portion. Oh, like one second. Raise my hand and I was raise like, your hand. hey, how, how can I get hired here? Um, That's good. And uh, as part of that agency tour, we left behind a book of resumes with every agency. That's what we, yep. Um, like that. Um, so my resume was part of that book and I made sure to stay connected with the HR team and with Gail after um, – the meeting and I had an informational interview with them late April, early May. And so that's kind of how that started. And throughout the whole summer, I was still actively applying to jobs. But during that time, I was still really thinking about SEC and how much I liked it there and um, still reaching out and staying in contact with them. And after a few more interviews and um, a summer off, which was really nice after four years of school, I got hired as a project management intern. Wow. This is... um... Uh, one of the uh, maybe a, like a best standard best practice benchmark situation uh where you had the introduction you 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 went on the agency visit you stayed in contact there what there might not have been a position open at the time but you still expressed interest and you did it the right way you followed up you kept that connection and then when it came time to an open internship 
and it took a couple months. We're, we're going to be honest. Yes. It took a couple months. And when you, when there was something that opened up, they thought of you and hired you. Yeah. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that I learned from that experience is people always say follow up, but follow up doesn't just mean one follow up email or a, an in person thank you note. It, it means follow up and persevere if you don't hear from them you know a couple months later reach back out and just check in it's you have to follow up more than you think you do if it's something that you really want yeah yeah i'm just like you you just put me in a trance there i was just thinking about all the follow-ups i need to do just from the interview guests i've had wow yeah 100 percent accurate and when you keep those consistent relationships you know it, it just makes it more genuine and they think of you and you know, that really does open up opportunities. So fantastic, fantastic. You get the job as a project management intern. Uh, was there some, uh, I mean, this is obviously a great agency, so you understand the value of even having an internship here, but, you know, explain to your parents or like your friends that might not be in advertising. How was that explaining like, hey, I got this internship and when everybody's probably working at like Deloitte or whatever, which I'm, I'm going through right now, like KPMG and all these big, how did you explain it to them? Like, this is a really important thing and it's a great stepping stone as an internship. How'd you explain it to people? Um, I definitely leaned heavily on people not understanding the industry when they're not a part of it because I 100%. Keep, it's so hard to understand the advertising industry from the outside, but it's so normal to have an internship before you have a full-time job. So many agencies intern to hire. So you're an intern for three months. And then as long as it goes mm -hmm. well and you're working your butt off, like yep. we'll hire you full time. And that's a really normal way to get a job right out of college in the industry. So mm -hmm. I think I leaned really heavily on Oh, you just don't get it. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. <laughs> well, no, yeah, and you, and like you said, in the, you know, it's hopefully that it is intern to hire, and it, yeah. if it's a honest agency that you know means well, that's their intentions. Sometimes, you know, at the end of that three months, it might not be for you, um, which is yeah. perfectly fine too. I mean, you just keep going. Yeah, and it, I mean, it doesn't always work out, but I think. The thing to remember is it's not just a trial period for the agency testing you out, like you're testing the agency out as well. So those three months, I think, are a really nice trial period for both groups involved. 100%. I totally agree. And what, what was interesting that we talked about before the podcast, when we start, before we started recording, was that you were able to learn a lot in your three months as a project manager intern. Uh, tell us a little bit about the benefits of that internship because it, it did a lot for you and you learned a lot. What did you, what were some of your responsibilities as an intern? Um, so as part of the project management department, I was responsible for all internal facing project management um, mm -hmm. at SEC, our client leadership or accounts department handles all external facing project management as well as overseeing internal project management. So I was responsible for the very tactical like follow-ups with the creative team um, and making sure that the timeline works for everyone's schedules, not just for that one client account, but across all client accounts. Because as a smaller agency, everyone is a shared resource. Yes. No one is ever just dedicated to this or that team. So it's yeah. really important to balance those key presentations and key concepting projects across everything that's happening. That sounds stressful. Yes. <laughs> that, that sounds very stressful. I don't know if I could do that, but so that must say, it must say if you're, if you want to go into project management and you're listening and you don't know the difference between a project manager and account executive. So would, would it be a fair assumption to say project manager is more timelines inward facing, like you said, those internal deadlines, and keeping in account external deadlines too, but it's really getting everybody on the right page. Yeah, I think it's definitely different at every agency because I know there are some sure. agencies where PMs are client facing, okay. um, but at a smaller creative agency um, like SEC, I think they're probably going to be more internal facing and focused on really making sure that there's synergy across all client accounts because mm -hmm your accounts team is going to be more dedicated to one or two clients because that client relationship is yeah. really important for them. Whereas internal relationships might be more important for a project manager. I got yep. to know everyone in the agency because I was working with everyone in the agency. Right. 
Right. And I, and <clears throat> I'm generalizing when I say project management ma- mainly phases internally. Yeah. That's just really the case that I've seen. I mean, from the people I've talked to, that seems to be the trend, but don't, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, so you did that great experience. You learned a lot. You, I mean, talk about organization, understanding what everything's going on in the agency, all the different timelines and uh, crossover overlaps between different people on different teams. You have to know what's going on. You're kind of like the pulse of the agency as an intern, Yes, as an intern. So it's a, it's a great internship, but you're not a project manager. Uh, You then headed as an assistant account executive and that was full time. How excited were you when that happened? Yeah. So I actually did full time as a project manager for a little while um, through the first part of the pandemic, um, which presented all sorts of challenges with the pandemic. Was this like Tiger King, like, Pandemic 1.0, yes. like pandemic yeah. season one. Um, oh, man. <laughs> Those are scary days. Yes. Yeah. So it was a lot of learning how to pivot our internal process to adjust to this new world that we were living in. Um, but then in January of 2021, I was transferred to the accounts department and I started as an assistant account executive and was a double AE for about two months and then promoted to an AE. In two months? Yes. How'd you do <laughs> um, that? Is it, it, it was quick, definitely. Um, I'm looking at my watch now <laughs> waiting for my, my approach. I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Hi. I think it was a function of really proving myself and going above and beyond as a project manager. Um, Mm -hmm. And then when I made the lateral move into accounts, because like many other agencies, we had a freeze on promotions and raises um, during during the first year. Um, When they decided to do promotions, I think, you know, the the work ethic that I had put in over the last year, even though it wasn't all in accounts, really showed. And um, I like to think that I earned it. (laughs) Yes, you did. Absolutely. You have. Yeah, absolutely. So that's amazing. And that's where you've been now. Uh, how long have you been as an account executive? Um, I think it's been just a couple weeks. It was right at the beginning. <laughs> okay, so we're all caught up. I yes, mean, this is good. we're all caught up now. <laughs> okay, so let's ha- let's go through it. Like, let's ask some fun questions. Like, what's it like working at a smaller agency? Um, like, what are your goals working at SCC? What are you super excited about? Just give us, you know, you're here now, like give us like some insight of working there. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, one of my favorite parts of working in a small agency, and I touched on this earlier was that you really get to try every piece of the process. Um, and I think the client that I, one of the clients I work on now, um, I work on two, but one of them is first Midwest bank. Mm -hmm. And my story with first Midwest bank is a great example of that. So when I started as an intern, I was, um, doing some internal project management for first Midwest bank. And then one of our directors from our video department, because SCC is a full service agency, um, asked me at lunch one day, like, Hey, do you want to be in an ad? And I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? And I actually ended up doing a billboard for First Midwest Bank. Um, no way. It was posted right around the corner from my apartment. And it was, no up, way. <laughs> it was up for almost a year. And then wow. about a week after I got put on the account, it got swapped out for new creative. So I've seen that account from project management to being in the ads to being um in the accounts team so i think that's a really cool experience that i never would have gotten at a larger agency no absolutely not at a larger agency that's so amazing and did you get to like brag for your like did you take your friends and people you're maybe your roommates oh, yeah. like come on we're all going there's so many pictures of me in front of that billboard yeah. send me that <laughs> uh what send me a picture and then we'll do that for like one of your graphics on the instagram that's oh for sure yeah. we're doing that yeah i love that i love that all right. What about um, any other, uh, I don't want to cut you off, but um, I want to get into advice for students, you know, uh, like maybe looking back, we kind of broke it apart as we were going through your timeline here, but, you know, just looking back in your experience now on the other side, what advice do you have for people, you know, a couple things that you have for people looking to break in and then like advice for me, because I've also just starting and I need some advice too on how to be a good account executive 
So advice for people breaking in now, people that are in advertising, if you can try to piece those together. Yeah. Um, I'll start with breaking in, but I think it's the same once you're in it's this industry is a lot about who, you know, so networking is really important. Um, whether that's networking within your own agency, just to make sure that you're friends with the right people from the right teams and you're not just friends with your own team and you're branching out and other people are aware of you and your work ethic um or making friends with your professors that have industry contacts that they can introduce you to or special extracurricular opportunities that's how i had one of my internships as um an account manager for um a project on harley davidson which was really amazing um it's a dream client yeah through a professor so i think like it's it's all about networking whether you're already in the industry or not quite there yet um I think another thing that kind of plays into networking, um, this is advice that I use in every aspect of my life, not just professionally, but um, my aunt always says, you have two ears and one mouth, use them proportionally. So I think it's really important to make sure that you're listening um, and whether that's as an account executive, listening to your client or listening to your internal team when they're saying like, hey, we need help, that there's too much going on or listening to people you're networking with to learn more about them like i think it's really important to make sure that you're hearing the right voices when they're in the room and not talking too loudly about yourself (laughs) absolutely absolutely love that i love that i love how you were able to translate that across you know either whether it's professors or people that you're working with you know you always be networking when you're breaking in and when you are already in, which is super important. So I appreciate that advice. I will take that with me tomorrow uh, when I go back to work. So what about um, now, what about like resources that you follow to stay knowledgeable? Anything off the top of your head that you can think of like that you recommend? We know Ad Age, we know Ad Week, we know We Are Next, we know all the all the staples. Is there anything that, you know, podcasts or blogs that you find super interesting? And if not, we can, I can put this into the graphic too. So it's not a big deal. I was going to say, I don't know if there's anything outside of the typical ad week and ad age. I think the thing that always surprises me about advertising is you can find pieces of news and analysis on the industry anywhere. It doesn't have to come from a trade publication. I think sometimes some of the most interesting insights that I've gotten about what's happening in the industry come from my analysis of pieces outside of trade publications and just my everyday life. So I think always stay observant, Um, whether you're watching TV on a Monday night, like maybe don't get up during the ad break or something like that. I think I think in order to be a good advertising professional, you just have to be observant of the ads that are happening around you and take a second to think and say, like, why does that work? Or why doesn't it work? Like, is that something that I can translate to the work that I'm doing right now? Love that. I always listen to like when my parents say, oh, I love that ad or I hate that ad. Never play that ad again. Like if I see that Coca-Cola uh pinocchio ad i will freak out the yeah. one that's it's just non-stop it's like, i hate whatever it I, freaks me out i hope that's not one of your clients because no, no, i get in some trouble i know what you mean and i like to tell my family and friends anytime they tell me oh i hate that ad and they're like oh no offense and i'm like it's it doesn't bother me first of all because i didn't work on it right right, but right. second of all if you hate it it's not for you it wasn't designed for you so yeah. much there are very few ads out there i think today with all of the data that we have that completely miss the mark so mm-hmm. if it's missing the mark for you it's probably not, not for designed it. for you and that's okay that coca-cola ad is not designed it's supposed to be designed for everybody <laughs> and i no, I nobody likes it sorry I'm, I'm getting i'm going on a rant now um but you're right yeah it's all about targeting and i tell my parents i've said the same thing I go, that Geico ad is actually really like highly effective. It's it's highly affected, highly awarded. People love the Martin agency. I believe that's who does it. Like it's just not for you. Sorry, mm-hmm. but 
great work and thank you for coming on this has been a fantastic episode i really liked the um the effectiveness of your story and uh how you were efficient with what you know and you're calculated from switching your major to going on and getting internships staying involved following up and doing the things the fundamentals are really there in your story and i think anytime a student can hear that again and again that's what's important and also for me and being in the in the industry also helps too nice to be reminded so thank you marley have a great night and take care awesome thank you (laughs) thank you all for listening to this entire episode of the breaking and entering advertising podcast I hope you enjoyed this week's guest. Make sure you go and connect with them on LinkedIn. Tell them that Breaking and Entering sent you. Now, thank you to Mikey Malarkey, our audio technician, and Buchan Zhang, our creative director, as well as the student team from the Midnight Oil Agency at the University of Illinois. Can't do it without you all. Thank you very much. We will see you all next week with another amazing guest.